On day one, I spawned in the world of Naruto as Sasuke Uchiha, and what I have is not a dream because I will make it a reality. I'm going to restore my clan and kill a certain someone. I start off by starting the story mode, which happens to be with Aruka Sensei, and everyone in the class has to perform the Shadow Clone Jutsu. I went ahead and performed the Shadow Clone Jutsu, but for some odd reason, it was a default Steve, and it wasn't me. He just seemed like a brain dead guy looking at him. The next mission is said I had to bring a bone, gunpowder, and an ender pearl to show my courage. So I started my journey to look for those three items. While trying to find those items, I stumbled upon Shikamaru, and when I talked to him, he gave me two shogi pieces to help craft a shogi board and told me to bring it to him once I made it, so I did just that. All I needed to craft a shogi board was just three wood slabs along with the pieces he gave me, so I just went to get some wood quickly for the shogi board. When I finally gave the shogi board to Shikamaru, I basically got scammed because he gave me one silver Rio. I then kept repeating this for the rest of the day. On day two, I finally gathered enough silver Rio to craft one gold Rio, and now I have 16 gold total. With that gold, I went to 1010 to buy Sasuke sword for 16 gold Rio, and finally we have a sword which is awesome and makes us one step closer to fully becoming Sasuke Uchiha. Then the rest of the day, I went hunting for animals since they drop levels, which allows me to upgrade my ninjutsu, genjutsu, or anything I want to upgrade. And when night came, I did the same thing hunting as many mobs as I could for the whole night to gain my levels as quick as possible. On day three, I finally got a bone, ender pearl, and gunpowder to continue the story mode, and I finally showed my courage and got rewarded a headband for being a real shinobi. With the skin I'm wearing, you can't see my headband, but oh well. I then continue the story mode, and it tells me to find the fifth Hokage, aka Sanade, also known as 106, and she was gonna be in the Naruto biome, so I started my adventure to find her. I finally found Sanade, and when I talked to her, she had a quest for me, and that quest happened to be to catch a cat, and it seemed really easy, but when I started chasing this cat, and punching it, nothing was happening, which was very, very confusing. Then, out of nowhere, legit 500 white Zetsu started chasing me and smacking me, and all I could do was run and run and use some fire jutsu to damage them, but that did not stop them from hurting me. So I took out my sword and started slaying as many as I could without dying. I ran to Sonate to redo the mission quickly, but these Zetsus wouldn't get off my tail. So I stood on top of dirt blocks to hit these white Zetsus without taking any damage. On day four, I finally started the cat mission again, and it says punch cat with story mode. And they meant that like literally, like with the story mode item, I have to hit it. So I started chasing the cat with my story mode and finally hit and completed the mission. Thank God. I started making my way back to Sonate, and when I talked to her, she said, welcome back, here is your reward. And I think I got 50 levels, which was all right, but I went through 50 times more than I should have because of that one story mode mistake. I got that great fireball technique now, which is awesome, and a lightning ball, but just looks like fire style realistically. I tried to continue the story mode and just got given substitution jutsu randomly with no context, which was kind of weird. Later that night, I tried using substitution jutsu and I went flying and a piece of wood took the place of my previous position. I then stumbled upon a hidden leaf shinobi who was using fireball jutsu on me. I then attacked back using my lightning style and charged the hidden leaf shinobi with my sword till I finished him off. I then stumbled upon an iron golem and charged him with my sword, but he did a lot of damage. So I started using my lightning ball and all that stuff but when i tried using fire style i legit got demolished so hard by him it's not even funny on day nine five days later after mob hunting and killing ninjas i finally unlocked the one and only sharingan night comes and i stumbled upon a few white zetsus and used my sword to finish them off after i finished them i stumble upon another hidden leaf shinobi and take him out with my sword also the next day on day 10 i decided to go mining because i need some iron to make a pickaxe and to find some lapis lazuli so i can craft a zabuza the egg and finally battle him. I went back up and got greeted by some white zetsu so I used my running fire jutsu along with my sword to take out the white zetsu there. I then go and craft some lapis lazuli blocks and use a water droplet to craft a zabuza egg. On day 11 I am finally ready to fight zabuza and I place him down and he starts off with his water dragon jutsu and it just blinds me. He started charging me so I use my shadow clone jutsu since I can't see a thing but he keeps spamming the dragon water jutsu and he keeps knocking me back and I just can't get close enough. I then start making a run for it and it keeps hitting me still so I decided to stand my ground and this knockback keeps me from hitting him and he finished me off just like that. Day 13, I gathered the materials to make a Sasuke egg and placed him down. And finally, he said he will teach me Chidori. And oh my god, when I unlocked it, it looked 
so sick in my hand holding it. The electricity moving and all that just made me feel so powerful. I decided to test it out on a white Zetsu I found and oh my god, it works exactly how it should and the noise and all that. I legit zoom so fast and take Zetsus out in one strike. I then test out my Kirin and holy crap, the lightning looks the same. I really can't wait to test this out in battle. Night comes and I tried using Kirin on this Shinobi but missed so bad, but I did use my substitution jutsu on him to run away. On day 16, I finally unlocked the Mangekyo shotting gun and you know what that means. I now also have the Susanoo. The first one looks like a rib cage surrounding my body and the second one is the skeleton looking one he used when he raided the Kage meeting. I feel unstoppable with how huge it is compared to my body. It looks so awesome when I hold my Chidori out and I can't wait to test it out in battle. But first, we are going to need an outfit change. And bam, just like that, we have the exact clothes to match the Susanoo and my new Mangekyo Sharingan. I fight Zabuza again right away and he uses that annoying dragon water jutsu and blinds me again. I use Chidori on him, but it barely damages him. So I use shadow clones to buy some time so I can get up close to him and start using my sword and get a couple good hits on him. And I tried using my Chidori, but ran out of chakra and couldn't get close enough. So I started eating my food, looking at my beautiful looking Susano, and started dipping as fast as I could. I then end up running into a white Zetsu, so I took out my sword and finished him, and then continued on my way and found a hidden leaf Shinobi and did the same thing I did to that white Zetsu. Day 19, I unlocked Amaterasu and stumbled upon this ship looking thing and wanted to check it out, but before I do, I want to look really cool doing so. So I activated my Susano and headed straight for business. I find an invisible skeleton with a bow and there was nothing interesting there. So I head up the mountain and start crafting a cobblestone cage for my next opponent to see if I can get an upper hand at the start. I then spawned Zabuza again, but this time inside the cage and used Amaterasu, then closed the door on him and let him burn. And by the looks of it, it was actually working and he was taking damage. And I felt like a 200 IQ beast with what I did. Eventually the fire did run out, which I was kind of annoyed about because Amaterasu flames are supposed to be forever, I'm pretty sure. So I had to make another door extension and do the same strategy again and i got it but somehow Gok opened the door and he used his shark water jutsu and hit me with his sword and escape he also knocked me all the way off the cliff and started fighting me so i had to use my chidori and do everything i could i also used shadow clone jutsu i tried using my sword and getting as much hits as i can until he inflicted too much damage and i had to use shadow clones to back up day 20 came and i made a little cobblestone enclosure where i can hit him but he can't hit me and finally something to stop his water shark jutsu so i can actually use my sword without getting knocked back. I finally end up finishing Zabuza and he drops his sword along with some levels for me and his sword does look kind of cool holding. On day 21, I start mining again and search for some diamonds and I was searching for a long time but finally found jackpot and mined up all the diamond down there. I then go back up to get some wood and start crafting a diamond block and a furnace so I could smelt some iron ore but I had nothing to burn it with so I went back down to get some wood and started using the furnace and finally I had enough to make a Atachi egg and battle my brother that I wanted to for an eternity. On day 22, I finally placed on my brother to fight him and he started right away with Amaterasu and he did so much damage that I had to run away. My Amaterasu is nowhere near as strong. He can spam it while I can do it only every 15 seconds and he finished me off without even being near me, which was insane. The rest of the day, I was training and fighting a pillager to get some levels because I am really weak, as you guys can tell. On day 25, I made another enclosure, just like I did for Zabuza, out of cobblestone to try and do the Amaterasu trap base for Itachi. I opened the door and started business and placed Itachi down and used my Amaterasu right away and closed the door on him. But oh my god, he already took more than half of my health with just one look from his Mangekyo Sharingan. I had to eat food real quick behind the base just to regenerate my health. Somehow this man escaped the matrix on me and used Amaterasu again and you know the rest was history. I got demolished. On day 28, I spent a couple days training and getting obsidian the whole time to try and create an unbreakable trap base for Itachi. The moment I placed this man, he breaks everything around him and kills me with one move. On day 30, I decided to fight Datara and the rest of the Akatsuki first because Itachi is on a whole other level. Datara is legit a TNT machine bombing me so I used my Shadow Clone Jutsu while I come up with a plan to stop it and I decided to rush in with my Chidori but missed and tried to come up with something else and use my Substitution Jutsu to get close but it literally did the exact opposite. So I decided to try and run at an angle to get close and hopefully miss his TNTs eventually so I can actually start using my blade on him but it seemed like it wasn't gonna work. So I had enough and activated my Susano and it looked like it's helping with the explosions because this time I got close enough to use my sword on him 
but the knockback power from his explosives are still flying me back too far to consistently damage me. I just kept persisting, taking all the hits and using substitution jutsu to fly and get over him to maybe stop the bomb from hitting me. I decided to use Chidori to finish him off, but he literally killed himself from his own attacks like a weirdo. I trained for a couple days and on day 33, I tried to fight Atachi again, but his Amaterasu is still doing too much damage to me. So I used my Renegon Chakra Receiver Jutsu, but it doesn't take out his health fast enough. He used his Amaterasu again, but this time it ended me for good. On day 34, I decided to activate my full power Susano and fight Sasori. So I have training before I fight my older brother again. I charge him with my blade and see his granny behind him, but he legit doesn't inflict any damage on me with my Susano, which is awesome. I can actually fight this guy with my blade. I used Shidori for the fun of it and afterwards my Shadow Clone Jutsu. I later then rushed in with my blade again for more hits and kept on doing this. I felt unstoppable, so I wanted to flex my Susano while Sasori struggled to damage me. And I finally did finish Sasori off, which I was really excited about because this guy actually gave me 500 levels and that was really, really worth it since he did not give me any trouble. On day 36, it was time to activate my Susano again and fight Kisame, also known as the Tailless Beast. I placed him down and there he was with Samihara throwing some water shark jutsu at me. At least I was able to get close to him unlike Deidara, but oh my god, this guy does way more damage than Sasori. I used my Shadow Clone Jutsu to stall while I used my Chidori on him. Afterwards, I used my Renegon Chakra Receiver move and I was getting the hang of a new combo to take him down faster. I kept doing the same thing using Chakra Receiver and using my Blade on him and backed up when necessary to heal, but I kept at it and finally finished off Kisame. As you guys can see, I had to show off my Susano just because and he did happen to drop 500 levels, which is pretty dang good. On day 39, I spawned in Kakazu and oh my god, the second I spawned him in, I knew this was going to be a long, long battle. Five of his hearts already attacking me and they have insane knockback along with Kakazu himself. I'm telling you, their knockback was no joke. Like I would get lucky to even get one hit before I fly halfway across the map. So I needed to try something else. I decided to use some shadow clones along with my fireball jutsu on Kakazu to burn him. I kept on trying to use my Amaterasu, but the game legit glitched out and it would not play. I legit was wasting so much chakra and none of my Amaterasu flames were placing. I then used substitution jutsu to get away from them to think of a plan. I used fire style again, but like I'm barely damaging him. So what I was thinking was to counter the knockback is to place stuff behind me because they barely inflict damage. It's just, I can't use my sword on them. And this plan was actually working, but they knocked me out of my build again. I then find another spot and spend a long time beating up the first Kakuzu heart and finally take it out. I then find another spot and do it again with the fourth Kakuzu heart. But guys, you don't understand how long this takes. Just slicing and slicing with my sword till they drop. But eventually, I got the fourth one as well. On day 40, I did the exact same thing with the third Kakuzu heart. And yes, it took that long that the next day started. But I finished him off just like the rest. And finally, I fought Kakuzu and did the exact same strategy and finished him off just like the rest of his hearts. He did drop 500 levels, but bro, this was not worth it for how long this took compared to the other Akatsuki members. The positive side is at least I can level up some attributes now. On day 45, I started my battle with the one and only Hidon. I use my blade just like he is to damage him and he does a hefty amount of damage with his scythe and I realize a big problem. His health starts regenerating if I don't consecutively hit him and that is a big, big problem. I kept on trying to charge him with my sword but his knockbacks causes me to waste time which in turn makes him regen health and that's exactly what we don't want. I decided to move places and had an idea in mind for my previous battles, which is placing things behind me and taking the damage head on to prevent the knockback, especially since Hedon regens his health if I don't damage him fast enough. We kept at it and just like that, we finished Hedon. He did drop his scythe, which looked super cool holding it, but we won't be using it. On day 50, I spent the last couple of days crafting a Manda egg and Haku egg. I placed down Manda, which is my summoning and oh my god, was it massive. I tried everything I could to ride it or to see if I could damage it, but I couldn't do a thing to it. So it was more of a visual thing, but still really cool how I could spawn him in. It was then time to fight Haku, and he started off with his ice style mirror moves, which kept on slowly damaging me, and my first attack on Haku was a Chidori. And then afterward, used my Renegon Chakra Receiver moves two times in a row, and followed it up with my sword, hitting him as much as I could. I then used Shadow Clones, but that pretty much was useless. I kept on doing the same thing using my Renegon with my sword, and this health was diminishing quickly. I decided to use 
used Chidori again on Haku, followed by my Blade again, and eventually finished off Haku with my Renegon Chakra move. He did drop quite a few levels, and his Ice Mirror move was still in effect after I destroyed him. Day 74, after some intense days of killing White Zetsu's mobs and training, I increased my health a lot to make sure I was ready to withstand my brother's Amaterasu, and then I placed him down. I tried to sword while charging him in hopes of missing his Amaterasu, but he did hit me and wiped out one full line of hearts off my health. I decided to jump off the cliff to start healing and running from Itachi, and my best move I could use on him was my Renegon Chakra Receiver move to damage him from far, and it was working, so I kept at it a while, running from him scared. I used Shadow Clones in hopes of distracting Itachi while I get closer to him to hopefully use my sword to damage him. I used the help of my Substitution Jutsu to launch me in the air to run quicker and escape Itachi's Amaterasu as much as possible. I used my Renegon Chakra Receiver and started running again, then found Itachi and used my blade against him as much as I could till he damaged me to where I had to back off. I kept using the same strategy till the next day. I found a trick that swerving left and right while hitting him with my sword causes him to use Amaterasu less frequently and I just kept doing that. Finally, after all of these years, I destroyed my brother Itachi Uchiha. He dropped me 500 levels which was not worth how strong he was and how many hardships I had to go through to be able to defeat him. On day 99, I trained a lot to increase my ninjutsu and got a lot stronger. I also unlocked my new Renegon move, but before that, I must fight my best friend, Naruto Uzumaki. I start off by placing Naruto, and there he is with a Rasengan in his hand. He didn't start hitting me till my blade came in contact with him and took out almost half a line of hearts in one hit, which is actually pretty strong since he hits pretty quickly. I used his own move against him, and my Shadow Clones threw him off the cliff, and I'm actually quite surprised they did that. When I jumped off the cliff, I saw a fireball get thrown at me, and I was confused as to who it was. Then this random hidden leaf shinobi started attacking me, but I took him out easily with two hits. I went back to Naruto and used my Renegon move that Sasuke uses to swap places with people, and it feels so cool to use. I followed up my Renegon move with a Chidori along with some Shadow Clones to chase Naruto down. I kept hitting and hitting him, and he was damaged enough for me to finish him off with a Chidori. And just like that, that was it for my boy Naruto Uzumaki. I then wanted to test out my space time move, and oh my god, it looked so sick when I spawned it in with my Renegon. I took my sword out and headed in. When I was inside, it was a very dark place with a lot of pink sky and a ton of white Zetsus were in there. On day 100, I decided to spawn in my student, Boruto Uzumaki, but he didn't really do anything. So I just kind of took my blade out and ended my man, but I low-key felt bad. I mean, come on guys, we all know Naruto is better anyways. I then spawned in who I thought was the Sage of Six Pats, but this man was the guy who served Naruto ramen his whole life. And holy crap, this guy is so OP. He is destroying me so bad that I had to run away and use my Renegon Space Time Dojutsu to escape or I would have died. When I went back to the regular world, somehow the Atachi from the first fight was still alive wandering the world. So I decided to use my Renegon move to swap places with him and then charge him with my blade to damage him as much as I could. He eventually damaged me too much and I tried running away from him to heal, but his Amaterasu 